the warning track. Smooth dirt, reddish brown, the warning track runs parallel to the outfield wall of the baseball park. It's there to protect the outfielder. When he races to catch the fly ball, eyes skyward, the change in terrain beneath his feet, from soft trodden grass to flat dirt, tells him he's about to hit the wall. It is not a foolproof system. The World Series, October 2004. I watched the games with strangers at a bar in San Francisco. I didn't want to be alone. Seven months earlier, I found a crack pipe in my flat. It was smoky brown, broken and sharp, something black and gnarled still inside. I'd never seen one before. The Red Sox hadn't won a World Series in 86 years. There were handmade signs all over the bar. They said, we believe. I needed something to believe in. The Baby Parade, 2005. A desirable neighborhood in Noe Valley. Safe and clean, family friendly. We moved here, Richard and I, in 92. I live here still, in the same flat, the same rent. I can't afford to leave. My neighbors all have bought twins. Every day at 11, the baby parade begins on 24th Street. Twins in thousand dollar strollers pushed by smug middle-aged mommies. What they have, I can't. A baby, a husband, a golden retriever named Rex or Charlie or Marley. Perhaps daddy beats mommy. Perhaps mommy throws baby's bottle against the wall after baby refuses it yet again. But, oh. You look at them. Look at the side of them. Manny Ramirez, former Red Sox left fielder, May 2009. Oh, Manny, I could have sold you my HCG. I have vials of it in my closet. I hardly got the chance to use it. One injection a day, the needle piercing my belly fat. Didn't hurt that bad. Getting tested for a blockage, my tubes filled with dye. Didn't hurt that bad. Having to ditch infertility treatments after two months because Richard wasn't really on board. Kind of like that time you left the bat on your shoulder, Manny. Last summer when Mariona pitched you three strikes at Yankee Stadium, top of the ninth, the game on the line. That hurt bad. I left Richard because I couldn't compete with a drug. The Red Sox traded you because you stopped competing. Why you quit on us, we'll never know. We looked the other way when you when you forgot there were three outs in an inning, didn't hustle to first, feel it like you didn't mean it. You were playful, boyish, a free spirit, a liar, a fuck-up, a brilliant hitter, one we haven't seen the likes of since Ted Williams. He led us to our first World Series in 86 years in 04, another in 07. But love has its limits. Richard went to L.A., you went to the L.A. Dodgers. He kept smoking crack. You, at some point, started juicing. And when you got caught, it wasn't steroids they found, but HCG, my fertility drug. It helped you deal with the lowered sperm count, the shrunken balls, the results of coming off a steroid cycle. You wanted hormones, Manny? You could have had a deal. <laughs> at night, 2005 to 2007, at night, I went to the alley to smoke, a habit I just started. I went there to drink red wine in a coffee cup. I went there because I couldn't stand to be alone at night. My cat friends visited, kept me company. Not all at once, for there would be fights, but one by one on their own schedule. They wound around my legs, nuzzled my palm. A damaged Snow White surrounded by forest animals, my own fractured fairy tale. Sometimes I lay down in the alley, the better to see the stars. Cars rarely drove there at night, and even when one did, I had time to get out of the way. I didn't want to die, not really, not always. Sometimes. Sometimes when the night was too long, when I was lying in bed with my own two cats, one on my pillow, the other beside me, sometimes I took a sleeping pill. An Ambien after a few glasses of wine was nice. I might get out of bed then, turn on the TV, listen to music. Or I might stay in bed, my guard cats around me, their paws on my face, their purrs in my ear, while my breathing slowed, while I slowly breathe. Thank you. August 
2009. That's a trick, isn't it? It's been seven years since I've seen Calvin. The last time was here at AT&T Park, or whatever it was called then. The three of us that day, Cal and Richard and me, we sat behind home plate, the same seats we're in today. This morning when Cal called, Manny's suspension is over, don't you want to see him? I said, okay, I don't care about the National League. But it was a day game and warm for August. The game is quiet, the pitcher's duel, perfect for such close seats, but the couple next to us couldn't care less. They're loud, animated, babbling through the entire game. They barely look at the field. Cal leaves to get more beer. Alone, it's hard to ignore those two. Even harder to listen to them without remembering seven years ago, Cal and Richard and me in these same seats, loud, animated, unable to focus. Before the game on Cal's sailboat, we'd done line after line of coke off the of plate. Let's not do that again, I said to Richard later that night. I love coke. The soaring euphoria, the false camaraderie, the numb lips. But I never wanted it around. It was too easy. Cal returns as Manny approaches the plate. Steroids. <laughs> Still mad at him, Cal says. We drink our Sierras. Not anymore. We're on different teams. Manny settles into his stance, oblivious to the cat calls. I admire his focus, his ability to shut out the world. I never thought that would happen, Cal says. Me neither. Manny hits one far in the left field. The outfielder turns, running, looking over his shoulder, tracking the ball. He leaps up in front of the wall, arms outstretched. The ball falls into the bleachers. I imagine that ball arcing, soaring above the bleachers, over the giant Coke bottle, the giant old school fielder's mitt, farther still, past the kiddie playground and the mini baseball diamond, over the parking lot and into the bay where Cal's boat is still docked. The Red Sox, 2004. We watch the games, the kiddies and I. All season long we watch, from May to September, a lifeline, a way to mark the days. We missed the first month, April. Richard left in May. In May, I bought the kitties, tiny ones, a boy and a girl, my own set of twins. Creditors sent letters, dealers banged on doors. Richard called crying. He called and he was raging. The games I could depend on. Three strikes, four balls, nine innings. Predictable. When I answered the phone, I didn't always, I couldn't always, at some point, I'd ask, you all right? At some point, I'd say, are you clean? I wanted to believe him. For Verizon, November 2008. The baby in the building across the street is crying again. We keep the same hours, the baby and I, up every night from 2 to 5. I heat up milk, draw hot baths, read history books. The sleeping pills no longer work. Nothing does. Across the street, the baby cries. At work, I close my office door, nap under my desk. I smoke to stay awake now. Sometimes I faint from lack of sleep. A doctor refers me to a sleep disorder clinic. They can't see me for three months. Please, I say, I'll be dead by then. One morning, I sit on a bench in front of Martha's coffee. I'm on my third cup. My neighbor with the baby approaches, pushing the stroller. She looks like hell. I hope Augie isn't keeping you up at night, she says. We're ferberizing him. Shouldn't be much longer. I'm up anyway, ferberizing? The Dr. Ferber method to get babies to sleep on their own. You have to let them cry it out. It works, but it's hard on everyone. I lean over and look at Augie, sleeping beneath the blue blanket. He has the world's fattest cheeks. I want to pet them. Instead, I admire his perfect skin, his tiny, closed eyelids. I hope his brush with sleeplessness is the most discomfort he feels for a long time. That night, I begin my own formalizing. It takes me two weeks to learn how to sleep on my own, but I do it, and without crying. The warning Track, 2009. What makes you ignore the change of terrain beneath your feet? What makes you dare to hit the wall at full speed? Pride or stupidity? Denial or desire? A love of danger and absence of fear? You won't get hurt. You'll 
meet the great catch. You'll hear the crowd roar. You'll feel loved. Feel good. You'll feel good. Some crash and fall. Some bounce back. Some never feel a thing. <laughs> 